when I leave, you can remember I said with the last words on my lips that I am a revolutionary. And you're gonna have to keep on saying that. You're gonna have to say that I am a proletarian. I am, I am the fish. park for, 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 for Negroes, so they designated the one that was on Champlain, which was connected with the Morgan School, uh, Sleepy Hollow. escaped was 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 recaptured by the, the, the Union Army and returned to John Little. Even though if you were in Alexandria, you would be uh, in a seat. Despite that, the, this was designated to be part of the Underground Railroad. It was the indentured servants. You know, you hear about this as being described as like the first blow in the American Revolution against the British. And basically it was these indentured servants who wanted to get rid of the English because they were like the government because they were restricting them from, well, you know, what had happened was that the, the British had tried to make peace with the native people around them who supplied them with stuff. And also they acted as a buffer because the, the Dutch were like colonizing as well, so they would have these proxy wars between different native tribes that represented, some represented the, the Dutch and some represented the, uh, the English, and all of that ends around 1640. So 1670, it's like, you know, we have all these native people and we have these treaties with them that the British have, but we want to expand, which is what they did. And they basically, part of the, um, byproduct of Bacon's Rebellion is they started marching up the rivers, up the Potomac. The first settler of Washington, D.C. is described as Ninian Bell, spelled B-E-A-L-L, -L, Ninian Bell. When you read about the Capitol or about Georgetown, it's always with this Bell guy, although it's spelled Beale, but they call him Bell. And he was at one time an indentured servant, and he was a fierce Indian fighter, and in reward for the, the, the uh, decimation of the native population, he was given uh, people who were enslaved. He was given slaves. And, you know, I mean, this was sort of the idea that, like, you know, we're not going to reproduce. They said, we're not going to reproduce. I'm, I'm not sure if they said it, but this is what I think. We don't want to have indentured servants anymore because it's a bit unstable. They're going to be in seven years trying to have a revolution, too. So it was by 1690 that slavery is inst institutionalized in the laws of Virginia and Maryland, right? Slavery is institutionalized, you know, things like, you know, if you're born to a slave woman, the person being born has to be a slave for life, right? Uh, you know, all of these particular, uh, the, before it wasn't as, as set as that, right? I mean, 
the people had a little more freedom by early on. So it was, it was really the beginning of it and, and the beginning of seeing um, black people as property and as, um, and, and then with that became uh, uh, religion played a very big part in enforcing and uh, propagating that idea, uh, especially Christianity, which all of the, and now if anyone feels a little uncomfortable about, about the role that Christianity played, not only in English colonies, but in Portuguese and Spanish and French. I mean, that was always a fallback, the way religion uh, thought of people enslaved, because it was in the Bible. And unlike the American Constitution, they've never really, like, you know, amended the Bible, so it's still there. <laughs> And if you walk around here, you'll find the trailings, the pieces that have been knocked off of pieces of quartz. This is a very sacred, holy ground to, to, to Native Americans who would, who would find... Uh, and this was one of the first places where a mansion could be built, the Holt House. Because when settlers came, basically they found where the Indians had like, been living and they said, okay, we're going to settle here because you've got water, you've got game, you've got you know, good soil, and that's how it worked. Distinguish between people with intelligence and not, and why people were. You know, Thomas Jefferson's notes on Virginia were uh, like totally in terms of like rationalizing how people who were enslaved were, people of color were closer to being animals than, than human. I mean, this, this was all part of, a, of an ideology and a mythology that, that made um, for what I call American exceptionalism. All men are created equal except. Sewer lines and roads and all of that. It was a very much a disrespect for, for that whole history. And we also found um, bones and stuff scattered around and, and artifacts from the cemetery. And then uh, Mary Belcher went down to the, the recorder of deeds. Of, there was the DC archive that has in it the cemetery death papers, the papers documenting people's deaths and put together the names of families and then we she began to locate those families so every year there's three or four commemorations of families of people who were buried here many of whom were important abolitionists members of the uh, uh, union army that fought uh, the colored union benevolent association the army that had been enlisted during the civil war On this bottom level. 
And as it turned out, um, Amos Kendall, who had rented this building from the owners for you know, five to ten years, had left it in a mess. It was an advertisement saying that this building had been like perfect, but now this guy had lived here and trashed it all. And we discovered in the, the National Archive that he was selling uh, 36 to 45 enslaved people. So we he financed, basically, um, Edison, not Edison, the guy who developed the telegraph. He was he financed the telegraph, oh. Amos Kendall. Um, in part of part of this part of slavery, there are two parts of it. But there were many people who worked as maids and as drivers and as kitchen staff in some of the more prominent houses in Washington. And they had children, and the children would run them up in the house. So we would send them out to a place in the country, and they would be interned there until they got up to a certain age. And then you would sell them into slavery in the South, where there was a real demand for uh, uh, kids who were, you know, beginning around 16 to work in the cotton fields. So cotton became like an important, once they invented the cotton gin, they could produce a lot of cotton, but they needed people to produce it. They, they could manufacture a lot of cotton, or separate it from the seeds and send it up to the North, and, and they needed more people in cotton. That's the, the, the term being sold down the river was really where they would send people down south, and they would break up families. This was the most brutal and unbearable part of the, the history of slavery, this later part of slavery, when they were doing such things. So I'm speculating, nothing based on anything, that, that this could have been based on the bars and the, the, the legends that, that preceded this in the zoo, that this had at one time been a place where the children were, were held. And in the zoo discussion, it was like, okay, they had like chains there, and this is maybe where people were being punished to run away. Um, <coughs> another guy said, well, the chains look like they may have been holding up a slot. And when, when a driver came up here, where are you going to put them? I mean, so, you know, before cars, you have like a, a driver who was enslaved, and they would be po poker games that John Quincy Adams had told here was part of the kitchen cabinet. And so those uh, people who enslaved had a room in the basement and they used these with the bedding. Yeah. 